Hi and good afternoon, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan and I'll be taking you through an interesting reflection on the Amish and how they face COVID-19 primarily without vaccines. What was their reasoning behind it? And most critically, what was the outcomes? How did they fare? Additionally, I want to take a look at some valuable um, papers that came out. I'm going to be talking about pathways to immunity, looking at the data from the Amish community in 2020 and 2021. And I'll also be checking out as well what the numbers tell us about COVID-19 in Ohio, looking at those outcomes as well. So if you're interested to see this, and we're trying to be objective here, to look at the data and try and make sense of what is happening. I'll be playing three short sections of a video that was done in October 2021 by Cheryl Atkinson, and this was on, I think, Charlie Kirk's YouTube. And it's interesting to see the perspective of the Amish community at that time, and to reflect again on the data and the outcomes. So I'll start off with clip one, then I'll have a quick chat in between, then clip two, and then clip three. So let's listen to what they had to say. And this was again, October, 2021. Actions taken to address the COVID-19 threat, hindsight is still very much underway. For your consideration, a story and outcome you probably aren't hearing much about anywhere else. It takes place in the heart of Amish country. Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Thousands of families lead lives largely separate from modern America. The Amish are a Christian group that emphasizes the virtuous over the superficial. They don't usually drive, use electricity, or have TVs. And during the COVID-19 outbreak, they became subjects in a massive social and medical experiment. So it's safe to say there was a whole different approach here in this community when coronavirus broke out Absolutely. than many other places. Absolutely. Calvin Lapp is Amish Mennonite. There's three things the Amish don't like, and that's government. They won't get involved in government. They don't like the public education system. They won't send their children to education. And they, they also don't like the health system. Uh, they, they rip us off. Those are three things that we feel like we're fighting against all the time. Well, those three things are all part of what COVID is. After a short shutdown last year, the Amish chose a unique path that led to COVID-19 tearing through at warp speed. It began with an important religious holiday in May. When they take communion, they, 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 they dump their wine into a cup and they take turns to drink out of that cup. So you go the whole way down the line and everybody drinks out of that cup. So if one person has coronavirus, the rest of the church is going to get coronavirus. First time they went back to church, everybody got coronavirus. So that's an interesting starting point. That's clip one. And it shows you the perspective of the Amish community, which was to face the virus head on. The question is, were they correct? Why would they take a different route from anyone else? And that leads us back to the paper that I'd highlighted. And I'll just show you here. So this was published in June 2023. Pathways to Immunity, Patterns of Excess Death Across United States Within Closed Religious Communities. So they looked at this just recently. Sadly, their data was only up to 2021. But they came to the conclusion is that once vaccines were became available, excess deaths declined in the general population and remained elevated among the Amish, Amish and Mennonite communities. They therefore were emphasizing that vaccination campaigns must also consider and value the cultural beliefs of closed religious communities. And they were making reference to this here. This is the pattern of excess debts 2020 to 2021. And when you look at the dates down here, this is January 2020, and this goes all the way to December 2021. That's what I'm saying. We don't have anything beyond that. And they have here the U.S., average mortality. So you can see a surge here. This was early in the, um, in well, October 2020. And then you see another spike here in November 2021. So this would have been around the time of the Delta wave. And this is what happened in this Amish community across the early part of the pandemic. In truth, this was not very different to the United States as a whole. So this is from Our World in Data, and it shows you an early peak in March, 
then a more significant peak in February 2021, and then another peak later on in March 2022. So this is after Omicron. And so you can see here, this is around the time of Delta. It comes down here um, in the summer period and then rises again. This part here actually is probably the Delta. So it follows a very similar pattern as the um, Amish community um, with regards to their perspective and vaccination. So let's just go back to the video and I'll show you part two. That says they weren't denying coronavirus, they were facing it head on. It's a worse thing to quit working than dying. But to shut down and say that we can't go to church, we can't get together with family, we can't see our old people in the hospital, we gotta quit working. You're working, it's going completely against everything that we believe. And you're, you're changing our culture completely to try to act like they wanted us to act the last year. And we're not gonna do it. Steve Nolt is a scholar on Amish and Mennonite culture and Mennonite himself. He's studying Amish news publications to analyze community-wide trends. So are you saying as of about May of 2020, things kind of went back to normal in the Amish community? Yeah, it's kind of by, by, by the middle of May, it's sort of like back to the typical behavior again. That also meant avoiding hospitals. I know of some cases in which Amish people like refused to go to the hospital, even when they were very sick, because if they went there, they wouldn't be able to have visitors. And it was more important to be sick, even very sick at home, uh, and have the ability to have uh, some people around you than to go to the hospital and be isolated. Then last March, remarkable news. The Lancaster County Amish were reported to be the first community to achieve herd immunity, meaning a large part of the population had been infected with COVID-19 and become immune. Some outsiders are skeptical and solid proof is hard to come by. Even those who, who believed that they had COVID uh, tended not to get tested. Um, their approach tended to be, uh, I'm sick, I know I'm sick, I don't have to have someone else tell me I'm sick. Uh, or um, a concern that if they um, you know, got a positive test, they would then be asked to really dramatically limit what they were doing in a way that um, you know, might be uncomfortable for them. So, so we don't have that testing number. We didn't want the numbers to go up because then they would shut things more. What, what's the advantage of getting a test? So that was part two. Interesting perspective from the Amish community. Now, they did take a hit with regards to COVID-19. Now, I'm just making it clear to people who still question whether or not this was just a flu or COVID-19 was a real pandemic. It definitely killed the people. And you can see from the outcomes with the Amish community, they took the hit with regards to their situation. This is the excess deaths um, across the baseline when they looked at the uh, Amish community in 2020 versus 2021. And they were seeing, this is the US overall excess deaths, um, showing that picture there. And I'd shown you the image before with regards to excess deaths in the Amish community as well. So they took a hit by facing it head on. And important to put the science in here. And as I always explain to people, understanding why this occurs is extremely important and not enough explanation has gone into the science around severe COVID-19. I'm just taking you back to some important details. This was done in 2016 by Professor Rudra, who used a model, an animal model, to replicate what happened with SARS-CoV. And in, in essence, it, the, the rules apply to SARS-CoV-2. There are three kinds of responses that can occur with regards to the infection of the virus. Once the virus is infected, this green line or this green shaded area represents viral load. If you have an early interferon response, this is the blue line here, you don't get severe disease. What's interesting is even though you have a higher viral load here with no interferon response, you still don't get severe COVID-19. Where you get severe COVID-19, they found from the research, is if you have a high viral load with a delayed strong interferon response, that's what leads to severe disease. And so this is important because any coronavirus will trigger an early interferon response, which is why many people 
who weren't exposed to the virus still didn't get severe COVID-19. Actually, it's only a small percentage who didn't have exposure and had a strong interferon response that would go on to have the risk of severe COVID-19. And that's the science part of it. And it helps us to understand how it was that even when the Amish faced the uh, COVID-19, their numbers did not fly completely off the charts. And that's an important point to reflect on, as we can see here. This again is them with the peak up here. The second peak, this was in November 2021. So let's go on and hear the third part of uh, the final bit of their video. One thing's clear, there's no evidence of any more deaths among the Amish than in places that shut down tight. Some claim there were fewer here. That's without masking, staying at home, or another important measure. Did most of the community, at least the adults, get the COVID-19 vaccine? Again, we don't have uh, data on that, but um, I, I think it's uh, pretty clear that, um, that in percentage terms, uh, relatively few did. Well, we're glad all the English people got their COVID vaccines. That's great because now we can do, we don't have to wear a mask. We can do what we want. So good for you. Thank you. We appreciate it. We, us, no, we're not getting vaccines. Of course not. We all got the COVID. So why, why would you get a vaccine? By staying open, the Amish here have one tangible 2020 accomplishment few others can claim. We, we, we have this joke when everybody else stopped, started walking, we started running. We made more money in the last year than we ever did. It was our best year ever. Did the Amish really find a magic formula? They say yes, and they don't care who doubts it. Yeah, every, every, all the Amish know we got herd immunity. <laughs> of course we got herd immunity. When the whole church gets coronavirus, we know we got coronavirus. Yes, we think we're smarter than everybody. I mean, should be tagging, but we, we think we did the right thing. So, yes, yeah, so that was the perspective of the Amish community. And it leads us now into another part or the final part of the discussion is what did the numbers actually tell us? So this was from Ohio in 2023. And you can see here, this is March 2023, uh, when they looked at COVID-19 in Ohio after three years. And this is the image here that I probably will use. So this image here looks at COVID-19 deaths per 100,000 residents. In this color here, this is a maroon, I guess, or dark orange. It's more than 500 per 100,000. Between light orange is 350 to 500. And under 350 is green. And so this is what they found in the context of the whole pandemic. Really, what they were seeing is that in the area that had the highest, um, the highest vaccination rate, it was Delaware here. And Delaware had like 80% vaccination rate. And they also had some of the lowest COVID-19 deaths. And that's what proponents who would say that this demonstrates that vaccines actually prevent severe COVID-19 and COVID-19 deaths. But when you look more closely at it, the area that has the highest concentration of the, um, the Amish community is in Holmes. And Holmes has only 20% COVID-19 vaccination rates. And what is interesting is that actually when you look across the whole of Ohio, even though they are significantly lower than anyone else, their, op their, their rates of death with COVID-19 are still much lower than many other parts of the county. What I think would have been more valuable is rather than just showing us the Ohio COVID-19 deaths per 100,000, is to look at the trend of deaths across the regions, especially in somewhere like Delaware. And as I said before, in Delaware, you are looking at 80% um, COVID-19 vaccination rates, and you can compare it. And this here is, um, is Delaware here. And we can see here that in Delaware, you are having 80%. They had 141 deaths per 100,000 in this region. Franklin had 69.8. Um, percent and their rate was 213.6. The problem is there are many factors that can influence these numbers and I would be interested in the trend across that region 
But whichever way you take it, if you were supposed to actually go all the way down to um, what happened in terms of COVID-19 in that region of homes, and I'll show it to you here again, and in that region there, you can see homes was 19.8% vaccinated. Theirs was 431. But looking through many other regions going up, this is always getting higher. You can see their outcomes were still better than many other parts of the, of the region that had higher vaccination, double or even triple their number of vaccines. So it's not simply just about the vaccination rate that has an impact on the outcomes. Critically, it didn't seem to affect the Amish's way of life. And that's one of the big issues that's coming out about the question of lockdown. But as a final point, I'd like to bring you back to reality. Whichever way we take it, the big question whenever you do any kind of intervention is what impact does that have on excess mortality? Because every intervention that you do can also have unknown effects that can impact on the value of the intervention in the first place. Our big challenge is to understand, as usual, what is the cause of excess deaths. And in this image here, I've got our world in data looking at excess deaths across the United States. And when we look at the age groups, this is from 2020 all the way up to 2023, we can see that there was still, this is 15 to 64 age group, 65 to 74 age group. Looking at this, the baseline of zero is down here. We are still having significant 15, 16% excess debts above the baseline all the way into 2023, April 2023. I suspect this is not happening in the Amish community. And we have to ask, why is that occurring? This is across all age groups. It's still 7%. It's only in the over 85s that it dipped be below the zero. And you can see 75 to 84 remains persistently up. But the highest seems to be the 65 to 74 age group. And it's still concerning even within the 15 to 64 age group. There are many other questions that we need to clarify. And this is why I'm raising these points, because whichever way we take it, excess deaths should be below zero at this point. Because if you would say that the vaccines have made such an impact, then you are not having COVID-19 deaths. Actually, some of the recent results show it's almost zero. So people are not dying of COVID-19. Why are they dying above the baseline when you have lost over a million people in the United States around COVID-19? These are the questions that need to be answered. And these are the questions that nobody wants to focus on because it raises important questions that it seems that politicians don't want to address. It's, it's essential for all of us to make sure we understand what is going on and try and find answers even if those around us don't want to. I hope you found this valuable. Have a great evening.